This is where your son or daughter has to be able to step up and say, yep, this is kind of what I need. Um, so yeah. those are things that, you know, prepping your student beforehand to do this because you don't want to have them go into a meeting and go, no, you know, school was pretty good and I think it's okay. And no, I don't, no, no, I don't really need extra time, I don't think. And, you know, because maybe they were in a school setting too where a lot of those things were already happening for them and they may not have even been aware of some of those support services that were put into place for them. So they don't even know really how to ask for it. That's how. Yeah, that's happened. I, I've sat in the meeting too where he said, I don't know if I even really have a learning disability. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. No, you do. It's right here in documentation. <laughs> yeah, and, and, um, a, and a lot of those schools literally look for, and this is as you do those last testing, um, and as you write, as you see those testing and recommendations, it needs to be very explicit what the diagnosis is because there's a very clear cut this disability gets this accommodation right. in college. There's right. no gray area. If it's it can't just be, it, they exhibit weaknesses in this right. area. Has That's to be dis not dis strong Has to be dyscalculia to get a, a um, math accommodation. To get a math accommodation and to get a um, uh, a like use of a calculator. calculator. I mean, it has to be, and as you look at your, those last testing, make sure that they are very explicit in what those diagnoses, and make sure it says what you want right. it to say. They'll also, often in the diagnostics, one of the last pieces of it will be like recommendations, and under the recommendations, the person doing the diagnostics may have written, this person, you know, so-and-so will benefit from extended test time or from whatever. So if those things are in place as well, oftentimes they work off of that to say, oh, it's right here in the, in the recommended report, then we'll give you that accommodation. So yes. How recent does this diagnostics need to be? I mean, usually within three years. For colleges. Right. Some of them now, it, it, it may depend if you have like a working IEP or 504, and maybe, you, maybe you've had diagnostics five years ago, but you've been maintaining right. it. Exactly. That, that may be right. enough for them. Every place is a little different. Yeah, and if it's ADHD, um, they have a form that they, the school, a lot of the schools has that you can give to your physician to get yeah, filled out. This is out, dyslexia, dysgraphia, so it's not a right. medical. Yeah. So would, you, you might be okay, but again, that's that, and that's a great question then when you're looking at colleges to say, if we register with disability services, how recent of testing, what exactly do you need from us? Because it's a great how, expense, I mean, and right. absolutely really fine with his diagnosis, with his Bible report, et cetera. But there's all these gateways where you might need this more recent diagnosis. Yes. It's very, very pricey, even though it's not really needed. Yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah. but I need it to get into college, and he right. needs Right, right, right. That's what I want to know. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. And the school may say, you haven't, you, you've been maintaining a 504 the entire time. We don't need right. you to update it. Or other ones might say, yes, most, we do. So that would be a great place to yeah. ask. Yeah, it is dependent, but a lot of them say three years. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. We've not had a big issue. A lot of our students, if they've come from Groves, and because okay. they because they've known Bell Groves as a school for whatever, they some some of the schools have been a little bit more leaning of oh it's okay because we know you, but other ones and again it might depend on the counselor who's there too, yeah. have been much more strict about it. Do you ever have experience where you, you know, like with homeschooling, it's kind of a unique situation. You have one-on-one, -on -one, you have all these, you know, you can make right. accommodations, Absolutely. you know, all the way through. Do you ever have a student where they get into a college situation and then they realize, gee, I'm having issues with this, then get tested and then, you know, do we just, they, are we they just open that? We just did that. <laughs> okay. We just had a student who just yeah. was tested a few weeks ago for the first time ever and she's a freshman in college. Yeah, okay. usually girls get caught. Later, later. In, later in life, okay. um, where kind of that, and in college, I think really there's training wheels and 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 all those 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 accommodations and all those skills that they learn to get by maybe um, didn't work in college and and now it's uh oh and now we're we got testing and now we have accommodations and that can be successful done even like the first year oh, or something yeah you can, yeah, you can do it mid done you could do it mid semester you could yeah. You can get registered right. with disabilities anytime. Right. You at any time you can register. With and so, did they take that person to a private? Yeah, she, testing service yeah, or here or here. Or? Yeah. here okay. we have a, a testing service here okay. that um, Ray Boyd um, has done lots and lots of testing, and he's done it for I 
for her years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if again setting my kid up to be successful, if you think that there's going to be concerns, I would get the testing and make yeah, sure that you yeah. set it up so that they are successful if they're going to need it. Right. Um, you just hate to, when we see it a lot as kids dig in holes, mm -hmm. and it's hard to get undug in college. I mean, you can get buried really quick. Right. So back to this, a couple of other little things, <coughs> registering for classes, purchasing your textbook. Uh, some, some kids may need electronic copies then, so if you do that early, you have enough time to um, get those copies of books if you need those. Um, it can take four to six weeks sometimes to get, those. Um, to get electronic copies through them. How are, are, and this is, would be another one that a lot in colleges, there's, there's tons and tons of textbooks. I mean, it's a lot of textbooks, tons of reading, and it's done fairly quickly. And, that, and that's something that students need to know, and that's where a lot of our students use Kurzweil, which is a program that reads, reads it to them. It's a text-to-speech program. And it's pretty right. powerful, and you can do. You can do a lot of other stuff. Yeah, you can do highlighting. You can do it. Make two-column notes right. and, and Cornell notes through it pretty quickly. What is it called? Kurtz, it's called Kurzweil. Kurzweil. It's, and it's there, on our. It's in a slide too. a little bit, a, a little bit right. further. But right. but again, if you're using Kurzweil to get through school, there's a lots of extra hoops that you need to jump through to get that um, from the get the digital copies right. of books to get it you know, churned over into a KESI file, which is read by, I mean, there's there's more steps and that takes a long time to do and don't wait till the first day of school to start right. doing those things. <laughs> so the program that Josh and I run, we work with students <coughs> providing academic support, the college support, and so these are things that, it's on our radar, not necessarily student radar, so we put together a checklist that we send out far in advance to families so they know this and we included a sample um, you all have it. it looks like this so this is one that we used in the past that's why there's things on there that say GPS so you know you can modify this for your purposes but just to keep these are things to keep in place and we put it in a checklist format because we found too we want parents to be aware of this but this is also something that students have to start taking responsibility for this as well so yeah parents you can you can be things like have you registered with disability services but a lot of this is kids need to be able to do this themselves. So there's a little bit more detail on our checklist here than, than what's on here. But, but we listed like, um, we throw this out to all of our students that you've purchased Kurzweil if that's what you need. Um, and then we provide information on how to do that. Um, we have more information on like your textbooks. Just a lot of textbooks are cheaper through Amazon to be honest. So we you know, help students negotiate that and we'll have students say, I don't even know how to use Amazon or how to order a book okay, well, let's sit down and go through that process so you know how to do it and you know how to pay for it. And the other thing that some <laughs> parents find surprising is that once you get to college, everything is addressed to your student, including the tuition bill, which probably you are the ones paying for, but it's sent to your son or daughter. And with everything going electronic, there's more and more that's sent directly to your son or daughter's email. So we'll have parents say, you know, I applied for financial aid and I haven't heard anything from the college yet. And we'll say, have your son or daughter check his email. And there's probably an email there from the college about some FAFSA form. And these kids are like, I don't know what that is. And they just, you know, they don't even read it. And then you find out that this was something that should have been taken care of. The same thing with the tuition bill. It might be actually sent to the inbox of your son or daughter. And if they don't open it up and read it or click the pay button, then you aren't seeing the bill, then suddenly the classes aren't paid for and they're dropped from the class. <laughs> and we've had that happen. <laughs> so we've started to put those things on our checklist so that we students see this too to say, you know what, even if you aren't the one writing the check, you need to be aware your tuition has to be paid. And oftentimes tuition is due, you know, six to eight weeks before the classes actually start. So even though you're thinking, oh, second semester doesn't start till January, guess what? Tuition is due December 5th. So it's just to be aware of that stuff. So this is just kind of for your use. It's not the end all be all, but just an idea to throw that out there. So then you um, get to disability services, and these are just a few of the available accommodations. These are probably more of the common ones that we see for students. Again, though, you need the documentation to back this up. 
but most colleges that we've worked with have been pretty good about um, providing for students um, private rooms for testing, extended test times, um, that they, um, like instead of having to write out an essay exam that they could do it on a computer to use spell check and things like that. They can get a peer note taker or what's really popular now is getting um, copies of lecture notes from professors. Some professors will put it right out on their websites. So whether or not you have the accommodation, it's available for